Welcome everybody to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to my subscribers that has been with, with me from the start and welcome newcomers. I hope you like what you see and if so, be part of this journey with me, with us, growing a big family that we are by hitting that subscription button and the bell notification to be notified of the new uploads. Up top, there's three little buttons you can click there, slow down the video to the speed you'd like. Also turn your CC for closed caption on every stitch I read will be, not read, every stitch I say will, you can read down here and take notes. In the description box, I do have a link. You can just click there and it shows you how you can do all of these things in two minute video that I have created. I also want to thank every single one of you for 2022 that have came through to help the women in need of thread that have sent thread themselves or have donated money for them. Thank you so much. I am so grateful and so are they. I also want to thank the women that have tagged me along creating my pieces. Thank you so much. And for the ones that are creating, please don't forget to tag. I do have a private crochet group. You are more than welcome to join in. Be part of the family with us there as long as you have a profile. There's too many scammers and too many frauds going on with the crochet groups nowadays. They're getting in there and they're scamming everybody out of their information through uh, mobiles or computers. They have links that says cut or bit. Don't open those links. These are hackers. They're scammers. Stay away from that. For that reason, my group is private. I also have a Facebook um, crochet page you can follow. I have Instagram and I have TikTok. All of these links are below in the description box. So thank you so much, everybody. And let's get started with the tutorials. I hope you're going to enjoy uh the tutorials for 2023. I have just launched two videos that I have started already 2023. So stay in good health, stay in good harmony with everyone, and don't be hard on yourself. You can create all things as long as you set your mind to it. Okay? I send you much loves and hugs. So the first thing you want to do is your magic circle or your six chain. Try to bring up a little bit of the camera here. So in my case, I'm going to do the magic circle. And one chain, I'm going to come back in and do a single and one chain. This would be my double crochet. Now you can do a single two chains. A lot of times I do a single two chains. I guess it depends on the mood or the pattern maybe. I don't know. Okay, so inside of the magic circle, I'm going to have a total of 16 double crochet. I'm sure you've seen many times this pattern, the beginning of it at least. Um, I have done many tutorials with the same uh, concept, which the only difference is we have no no space it's all together but i'm sure for you for those of you that follow me remember this we start with the uh, double crochets and then next row the two together in this case i can't even remember yeah two together and then next row one alone two together next row two alone two together so for the people that have been following me but of course we always end up with new people in the channel welcome the new people i hope you guys enjoy and subscribe to the channel it's free and hit that bell notification and please everyone give a thumbs up i see enough of you looking at the videos doing also the patterns but you're not giving thumbs up please do so two four six eight nine so i'm going to do 16. So once we've done our 16, I'm going to close it, but I'm not going to close it too tight. And you'll understand why. I'm going to leave a little bit of a hole there like that. Okay. Because once we do the white, we need to go inside of this hole to come out and do the slip stitch. That's why we can't close it too, too tight. Okay. So now we've closed in. I'm going to come back into the same space, do a single and one chain, maybe two chain for some of you back in the same space and create another double crochet. So now I'm going to create two double crochets per space. So we should have a total of 32 double crochets. This is the second row. Okay, two per space. 
So I've done my two per spade, so I'm going to come on my chain. We did a single one chain or a single two chain. I'm going to close it up with a slip stitch. Coming back in the same space, doing a single one chain, and again, another double crochet in the same space. Next space, we're going to start to do one double crochet alone. Next space, two together. Next space, one alone. Next space, two together. So this row three will be always the same way. So we start off with 16 double crochets, second row two together on the same space, 32 double crochets, and now two together, so single, one chain or two, depending upon your tension, and another double crochet in the same space. Next space, one alone, two together, one alone, two together. We're going to continue like that all the way around. Okay, everyone, so we pretty much did the third row, two together, one alone. I'm cl I've closed in with a slip stitch. I'm coming in the same space, single. I'm going to try to do a two chain this time because I think it's pulling a little bit too much because I'm using a bigger hook. So I'll do a single and two chain. Actually, we have to do another double crochet in the same space. I don't know what I was thinking. So two together. And now this row uh, four will be two alone. So two together and two alone. Next row two together, row five, and three alone. We're going to repeat the same way all the way until row, until we get row 12, including with the first one. We're going to do until row 12. So I'm on row four, two together, two alone, two together, and two double crochets alone, one per space, two together, And then two double crochets alone. So next row, row five, two double crochets together, three double crochets alone. Row six, two together, four double crochets alone. And we continue like that until we get to row 12. Okay, counting from the first one, one, two, three, four. So we are in row four until we get to row 12. We're going to keep doing two together. And then now this row four is two alone. Row five, three alone row six, four alone, row seven, five alone, okay? So we're going to take it from there. I'll meet you at the end of row 12. Okay, you guys, so I finished my 12th row, and on my 12th row, I have 12 double crochets, okay? That's counting from the first one. Now, as you can see, it looks a little bit pleated, but once you uh, block it either with water or whatever way you block it. I do it with laundry softener spray and I stretch and I light iron with a bit of steam over it and it becomes straight like that one. So don't worry about it if you see this like this that it's not flat. It does flatten it out once you spray and you stretch it and you put it into place as you know I'm stretching it already here with all nothing and it's already going into place. Okay so we are going to row 13. Now row 13 is going to change up a bit because we need to start doing the curves sort of on the orange, right? So I've closed in with a slip stitch. And let me just take this down again. Pull up the camera a little bit. Okay, so closed up with slip stitch. I'm coming into the second double crochet that we have here. And I'm going to do a single, okay? And on the next space right after where we have the two double crochets, I'm going to do half. Next space, I'm going to do a double crochet. And now I'm going to do triples until we meet here where we have the two double crochets together. Okay, so doing triples. And there's not really a specific count because sometimes you can have six triples or seven or eight. Um, so that's why I'm not mentioning how many triples we need to do because it all depends 
I guess, on the on the rows that we've done. Okay, so coming in with my triples. Now we have the two double crochets here, as you can see. And I'm going to do the increase just the same on the second double crochet where we have the two double crochets together. So I have my first and my second triple on the same space. Now the other um, the one that we have the two, we're going to repeat what we started here. So it can give us that nice big round for the orange. Now, Coming back in, just continue to do your triples until we meet at where we have the two double crochets together. Actually, three before the double crochets together. Okay, so I'm going to continue here and then just show you. Okay, you guys. So, three space before we hit the second double crochet. Okay, after my triple. So, we have one. We have the the two double crochets here one two and three so here i'm going to do again the double crochet here i'm going to do half and on my second double crochet here from the loops i'm doing a single so we can have this curve sort of like an orange okay so now we know we're going to repeat the same pattern as we just finished doing here i'm going to do half double crochet exactly like we did here i'm going to do one double crochet exactly like we did here and then i am going to continue my triples until we meet the other two groups again of the double crochets together and we're just going to do the increase so once we get here on your second double crochet we're just going to do an increase of triple okay and then continue on your triples until we meet three space before the next group so we can do a double half and on the second double crochet a single okay so i'm just going to continue my triples and i'll meet you here where we have okay so we'll always be one group with double and then the other group would be with this with the double half single double um, single half and double crochet and then triples again okay so I'm going to meet you there okay so we are where the groups are here we're just going to do the increase okay on the second double crochet So we're on our second double crochet here from the group, from the previous row. I'm going to do two together on the same space. And then continue on until the next um, groups here. And we have to have three space before. We're going to do the double crochet, the half on the first of the group, and a single on the second of the group. Okay, so I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm reaching where the groups are. Three before. So three before the second double crochet of the groups. Okay, so I'm doing a double, a half on the first double crochet of the group, and on the second one, single. And then next one, continue. A half, a double, and then your triples until the next group you're going to do the increase so basically one of the groups I'll explain to you a minute here i just want to give it a little bit more um, a rose here so i think you could pretty much see what i'm doing here so here's one of the groups this is the increase and then we do three before the group. We do double, half, and single on the second double crochet. Now, again, on this group here, it's an increase. So on this one here, again, three before the group, we do double crochet, half, and single on top of the second double crochet from the group. Now, of course, because we're doing 
the decrease here. We're going to do two together on the next group. And then on the next one, we are going to decrease again. Three before, do double, half, and single. Okay, exactly what we did here. If you need to rewind a bit, then go ahead. So we're going to have eight of these curves, okay? You know, to do the curves, it, it takes two of the groups together, okay? So I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so another thing is, if you don't want to get like mixed up on it, you have your markers. If you don't have markers, you can put a piece of thread just to make sure you don't get mixed up. Now you can have the choice either to do markers where you're going to do the doubles only or where you're going to decrease. So you would come where you have your groups and you know on your second one, that's where you have to do your single from the half, single, and then half. Okay, because everything else is triple, right? So what you can do is you can go on your single here. Now you know that on the second one, you need your two double crochets, unless you want to put a marker where, not double crochet, triple. If you want to put a marker just where you're going to do your triples, then you can go ahead. If not, you can just, or have different colors of, let's say pinks is the single, and then blues, it's the, the doubles in the same space on the second. So you'd come here, let's say you put a specific color for it. So you know you have to do two triples on the same space. And where you have your pink on the second double crochet is where you have to do your singles. So it's one group with uh, two triples and one group with a single. One group with tri two triples and one group with a single. I think that's the best way for you guys not to get mixed up, okay? Okay, you guys, so I'm reaching the end. I'm going to come in with my last double crochet. Now, we started with the, um, we went over, we did a single, remember? So on this one that we had closed in from the previous row, we're going to do half. That's right on top of the first double crochet of the group. And then we have a single right after. So we're just going to slip stitch through there. And cut our pattern, our pattern, not our pattern. Oh my goodness, don't cut your pattern, your thread. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go block mine. I'm going to spray my softener and I'm going to light iron it before I go into the next step. And I suggest you do the same because it has to be stretched out well in order to do the white making the the uh, division of the oranges or you're going to have a hard time if your pattern is too pleated it won't fall straight when you do the white on it okay so that's why i suggest you to block it before you go into the next step because i'm going to do that and that's why i don't waste time waiting it for it to dry i pass the iron over it and it stays dry already so i can continue on so it looks all pleated like this. Now I'm going to go and um, and do mine, and then I'll come back, and we're going to continue to do the rest of it. And this is what I mean. So I'm going to block my pattern, straighten it out, so we can do this. Because if it's too pleated, you're going to have a hard time to do this. Keep it as a straight line, okay? Okay, you guys, so I went to block mine. I sprayed, I've stretched it with my hands, I light ironed over it. Now, if you're afraid, if, you, if you're not using 100% cotton thread, you're using yarn or some kind of other fibers, you could always put a pillowcase over it and, and iron and steam over it, and you'll be good to go on both sides, okay? So you can stay nice and flat, as you see. It just stays nice and flat. Now, of course, once I'm done with those white stitches coming through for the division, I'm going to block it again and have it nice and straight out. So we're going to go with the white. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do this with a needle. So basically you have your thread here. So you would come in from the back into, let's say, the center here 
well, not on the center, but the first, let's say, double crochet. And you would line it up, try to get as lined up as you can on one of the, of the, where the groups are. And then you would just line it up like that. And then you would just come in and go through there like that. Okay. And then you'd come into the back and then go back with the thread into the center and do the other way. And then back in to the center, or actually you will have to, yeah, back into the center and then again the other way. So you can do it this way with the thread only like that. I'm not going to do it like that. So I'm going to do it with a single. I think it's nicer. Not a single slip stitch, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my slip stitch knot. And I'm going to see where I have, okay, exactly um, where I have the single here. Okay, so I have the two double crochets. And I have the single right there. So I'm just going to pull my thread through it now. That's a little bit hard, a little bit tricky because it's, you know, a lot of thread. And you have to come in directly. So I'm going to come in into between the first double crochet. Right between both of them with a slip stitch. So I'm going to turn my pattern because I need to go into a straight row all the way down. And basically, I'm coming into the next one. Now, you don't want it too loose, too baggy, and you don't want it too tight. So I'm coming in between the two double crochets that I have in the groups, and I'm just going to continue to come down. It's always harder to do this side to the other side. When you're going up, it's much easier, right? So you're just going to slip stitch right between them. Make sure that you're following. Um, you have to follow a straight line. So at least the best you can. So I'm going to try my best to keep following my line. See, I already see this is crooked, so I grabbed the wrong one. A little bit tricky. But you can do it. it. takes a lot of patience, though. And then I keep slipping out of it. Sometimes it's just a question of practice, right? So you have to always make sure that you're lined up. You don't want to grab other threads except for the white one. So yeah, it takes a little bit of patience to go through it. But once you get the hang of it, you'll do fine. So you need to continue a straight line all the way to the center here, okay? Okay, you guys, so I've done my line. It's not the perfect, but it's okay. So I'm going right into the center. Got to make sure... I'm just going to pull my thread here a bit. I can, don't want this um, thread that I have here from the magic circle to be in my way. So I'm just going to pull it through and then cut the thread because I already have enough, you know, to deal with, with that white one. So just hide your thread in between for the people that did the magic circle. I'm just going to cut it with a bunch of little threads from, from the threads, right? <laughs> okay. So, again, I'm going, it's going to be much easier going up than going down with this. It takes a little bit of practice, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can all do it. Okay, so I'm coming into the center of the 
hole there. And you gotta make sure that you are lined up properly. Trying to feel my thread in the back. Now we know that the doubles are there, so we gotta line it up and just come through where we have the doubles. Once I get a good grip, then I'm good to go. We don't want this middle one too tight either because by the time you're gonna block it and stretch it, it becomes smaller, okay? We don't want it too loose, but we don't want it too tight either. It's not gonna look pretty. Okay, so you're gonna try to line it up. Just by going in like that. And always stretch your pattern out because you wanna make sure that you're lined up with it. And if you find that you're not really lined up, like here, I can tell already that I'm not lined up, so I need to go one over so you always have to stretch the pattern out to make sure that you are lined up properly at least more or less we know it's not that easy okay so anyway basically you know what i'm saying so now i'm just going to keep going all the way up and then i'll meet you there at the top Okay, you guys, so I pretty much reached the top. Okay, now once you reach the, now even if you have to go through uh, some stitches on the double crochet, then go ahead. So I've reached my top here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of the string longer, and I'm just going to pull through it like that, okay, and leave it like that. And then I'm going to come back again and then do the opposite way. Now that one, I have three strings that I've done. And I will be doing the same thing. But you can do until eight. It's up to you. So I'm going to come into my next one, which I'll do right here on the center, right in the middle. And I'm going to come again where I have my single, pull my thread through, and then line myself up already so I can get a, a good start here with the first one. And then turn around again and repeat the same process as we just did, going all the way to the other side. Make sure that your pattern is straightened out so you can have a good lineup. We don't want the slip stitch too loose. Like we don't want it too tight either. Okay. So we pretty much go through the same thing all the way to the other end. And then cut your thread and then do again from another arrow and then cut your thread. I'm going to continue to do mine and then do my third one. And that's it. I'll have six slices, let's say, of oranges. Okay, everyone. So I said I was going to do six, but instead I did eight. Just to show you that you can do six, you can do eight. It's up to you. Or you can do just four. Um, I'm the last one. And of course, you can see it pulls quite a bit, so it's all crumpled up again. Until I block it again, it will come to normal. Now, the last one we don't cut sometimes is not there. Okay, so we close right in the center of that curve. I'm going to do two more chain. So that's my double crochet. On the next one, double crochet, because when we come back around here, we're going to do a double crochet. So we'll have three on these curves here, three double crochets, okay? Right next to it, I'm going to do half, and then I'm going to proceed with singles all the way until before the next one, okay? So single crochet all the way, 
and I'm going to meet you here so you will understand. And I'll be hiding the thread that I left, this little thread that I left behind underneath. So I have one left here, which is that double crochet we had done on the previous row before we did the half. So I'm going to do a half and then right here on that half, I'm going to do a double crochet. Okay, so where we have the double crochet here from the previous row, I did double crochet. Whoops, I don't know what's wrong with me today. So, okay, yeah, we did half where we have the double crochet. Half, now we're going to do double crochet. And on top here of the middle one, a double crochet and a double crochet right after. So we have three double crochets and I'm going to do a half again where we have the double crochet from the previous row, not the triple, right? And then proceed again with singles. Okay, so let's recap that. Singles, double, um, half double crochet on the double crochet from the previous row because the rest is triples, right? Then we have that half I did double crochet in the center, double crochet, double crochet, half, and then I start again with the singles. I'm going to show you one more time when we get to this one here. Okay, so we have arrived where the double crochet is right after the triple. I'm going to do half. I'm going to do next space double crochet. In the center here, a double crochet. And then right after where we have the half double crochet from previous row, we do another double crochet. So we have three double crochets. And then half, and then proceed with your singles. And I'm hiding my thread at the same time. And this is how it's going to be. Okay, so it's just going to give you that little bit of the effect for the orange, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys, so I did my half, I did my double crochet, and we are pretty much at the end here where we started that double crochet, right? And now we are going to cut the thread a little bit longer so we can tuck in the loose ends. And then just tuck in, and I'm going to come in with my darker orange. Okay, so my darker orange, this row is going to be about half double crochet, so you can pretty much start anywhere. Half double crochet is one per space all the way around. Did I do this right? Let's try that again. So I'm going to come in with a single, obviously I have to start somewhere, single and one chain, that would be my half double crochet. Next space, so half double crochet, one per space, all the way around. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end. So I finished all my half double crochets. And now it's just a single crochet per space and we're done. So one per space, single, and then I'm going to block it again, spray it, iron it, and come back and show you. So you can cut your thread after you finish doing your singles. Okay, and then I'll show you. As you can see now, it's all crumpled up again. And then you'll see once I block it and come back. Okay, everyone. So I pretty much finished doing what I needed to do with the uh, singles. And I blocked my pattern again. I'm trying to look for my scissor here. There's always little bits of thread that are left 
and I'm just gonna cut it. So what I'm gonna do is, I didn't wanna leave it just like that. I wanted to give it a nice little decoration with some, um, I'll fix that after, with some leaves so I can, now you can leave it like this, it's optional, it's up to you. Um, in case you do want to add the leaves on, like I said, you can leave it like this, it's optional for you. It's blocked, it's perfect. So what I did was I added two leaves, wrong side, two leaves on the edge there so it looks like a real orange now just to give it a little bit more decoration what i'll do is i'll leave the link to these leaves below in case you want to create it and before finishing uh, the last row we add on as we go so i have one two three four with the tip five rows okay chain and i'm coming back into the same space with a single okay and then now we're going to add onto the doily now you're going to um where you have the opening curve here okay so if i count i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 so i'm going to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 i'm going to count on my 11th one here so i can hook it on so it can give me more or less into the center of that um of the thing there and then i'm coming and grabbing so i did a slip stitch i'm grabbing back loops only and doing a sing um single crochet Okay, and then I'm going to come into the next uh, space here on the pattern and I'm pulling my thread through and doing a slip stitch. And then I'm coming back in and grabbing back loops only with a single. And then I'm coming into the next one here, grabbing my thread again, pulling through into the next one single next space and in, in the pattern pulling my thread through slip stitch into the next one single coming into the pattern again on the loops slip stitch and again so we're just going to repeat this like this until we get to the middle of the leaf so nothing to it. Sometimes it's just a matter of practice. Back loops only. Single. I'm coming into the pattern, grabbing both. Passing the thread through, slip stitch. Single. Now, like I said, this is optional. You don't have to do this. I mentioned that on the other video. I just think it gives it a cute spark to the orange and makes a difference. Um, I do have a bunch of friends that have created this uh, pattern. Everybody has their own input, so I have my own input on mine. Now, I'm basically at the middle here. So, one, two, three, four. So, one, two, three, four. So, it's five. Yes. So, then you would just finish your, your leaf. I don't know. Where is my mind? I guess I had in mind to do six and I still ended up doing five. Okay, no issues. Okay, and then you're pretty much just gonna close it off. My thread's already cut. 
Okay, so I finished mine off. I tucked in the loose ends and I have another one built already. Of course, you have to build it first. And I wanted to also mention that the part that we sew on is the the wrong side. So these can stick up and you'll know the difference because this one here, you could almost put a finger in the middle. It's it's empty, right? And this one has the two um, 3D coming up. Okay. So now just need to do at least one more chain here. Single, I should say. So I have one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to do one chain. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to turn my pattern around also. So basically, you would uh, continue to do your fifth row, one, two, three, four, and five. Actually, one, two, three, four, yep, yeah. okay, I was right. Oh my God, I'm telling you, some days. So you do back loops only, and you go all the way to the edge, so we can add on the other side of the leaf to the pattern. So now I'm on the center here and I'm going to do a single and then come directly where I have the single on this one we already did on the same space, okay? so. Close it up. I'm coming in to the next space here, back loops only, with a single. And then I'm coming in, gotta put my thread in the front, and I'm grabbing the next loop here and grabbing the thread with a slip stitch. Back loop, single, next space. Slip stitch, back loop, single, next space, slip stitch, back loop, and we continue to repeat the same thing, whoops, I have to do a single here, and we leave the two last ones we don't do, right, because we have to leave that effect of the um, five little corners of leaves, I guess, if you want to call it. Why do I have a habit of putting a slip stitch here? It's because I'm doing slip stitch on the other, on the pattern, so. And I'm talking, and when I'm talking, I get confused. Not concentrating what I'm doing here. Not a good thing, right? Not easy sometimes people to do tutorials, especially when you have to create certain things and uh, you get to concentrate it, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to finish on my next one and then I'll show you. Okay, so I'm pretty much at the end. And I have this little two chain left, uh, two singles here left. Okay. Got my thread, and then I'm just gonna tuck in all the loose ends. Okay, you guys. So I pretty much just blocked it also. So I did a little bit of spraying on them and ironed it so it can be nice and straight and flat. And this is. The end result, of course, for the placemat doilies as you wish. Okay, so I'll have a, uh, the pictures and a little video at the end. So much. I will see you in the next video. And I'll leave all the links below on here with the leaves. Mm -hmm.